Hey Nico, thanks for submitting your work for this month's Zanin Jam. Uh, it's looking real good. I'm like, uh, after looking at the different versions you had up, each version got better, and I felt like the body mechanics now are working a lot better from the first version I've I've seen. So it's really good. Good job, man. Like, um, let's quickly look, play this over, and yeah. Yeah, I really like the snappy timing and cartoony animation you got here. And also, like, a really cool rig. Uh, I've never played with it yet, but, you know, seems like a really cool rig to play with. Yeah, first up, like, um, the, I would say one thing that would push your shot a bit more would be the camera move. So right now, when I look at the camera move, it is actually leading Spider-Man's actions, or it's kind of like preempting uh, Spider-Man's actions. So if you look, it's already, the camera's already moving up when Spidey before like before Spidey wrote, like revolves around that pole, and actually you want it to be delayed and following Spidey's actions. Because if you think about it, if you're holding a camera, um, you're not going to be like, you're going to be reacting to what Spider-Man is doing. So there's going to be a bit of a delay. And so I would push this like camera move maybe three, two or three frames. So I would actually start rotating it, start rotating it up or tilting it up around frame 23. And Throughout the shot, uh, throughout um, throughout this part, yeah, it's the same here. It starts rotating down before Spidey goes down. So I'll delay this part as well. And same with here. See, if your camera's already going up while Spidey is going uh, is going up. It's like, it's kind of like if the camera man already knew he was gonna do that. So if I was you, I would delay that. Delay all these camera moves uh, by a few frames. And what would also help with the, um, in terms of the camera is that right now, this beginning section and this last section, the camera move is pretty much still. You want to keep it, you know, moving. So this part doesn't, this camera move doesn't become so jarring because right now it kind of just starts moving like suddenly, and that's not um, that's not ideal. So I would keep the cameras moving in the beginning and in the end. Also, for the uh, another thing with the camera, when you rotate, when you're Here, I noticed there's some rotation Y on the camera, which is nice. So it's not just rotation X. Here, you want the same thing, because right now it's just going up and down. Just up and down. You know, you want to add, like you never, like, never want to just animate one rotation axis, you want to animate rotation X, Y, Z. So even if it's just a little, or else it becomes too unnatural. So yeah, something something to think about. And now as we move on, I think these poses generally are really, really nice. But when we look at the run here, you can see that as he goes into his anticipation, his arm, his body, his limbs, his body, all move, all go down together, which makes it kind of stiff. You want to break that up and give it some more overlapping action. So I would actually just delay that right arm just to break his body up a bit. So you have here, 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 here. here. Just to break it up so you have more looseness in him. You can even break the leg up, this leg pose a bit. Flip his ankle up, 
So there's more. Yeah, drag it. Drag that ankle. Into that. So because he's using so much power to throw himself onto that pole. Uh, by the way, I really like this reach pose. It's in that arc on the arm. It's great. What I would do to make it even clearer is that what I see right now, the problem with this motion is the leg, the screen right leg, so this one. If you look at it, it kind of just hovers there. You look at it, it just hovers there. And it's like, when it comes into this anticipation, it kind of just waits there. It's almost, it's a bit awkward. So what I would do is actually like, which actually helps with these poses as well and pushes it is that because when you like you go reach you're using all that force so he would use his legs to give him that extra like force to push himself to the bar so i would actually instead of having this the leg stay here i would have it flip back so it'd be something like He's already going up. He would actually kick. Back. So by here, he'll have like full extension. And have this like, you know, this path of action, this line of action, and then go into these nice bent legs that you have. Yeah. Or here. Make sure it's pushing even more. Have this leg back here. Push it back. It's coming. And goes up. Kicks. whips into that it's hard to see so let's scrub these legs out and see how it plays yeah you can already feel the whipping motion more So that's what I would do with the leg, because yeah, it's a bit, it just feels a bit, it's like hovering there. And yeah, I think that would be the best option to stop the hovering leg, the hovering left leg. And then also for these poses to push it even more, I would, push this arm out already. You're in, the camera's hiding his arm, so you don't know where his like, left arm is. Why not show it? Have him reach, really reach, push that pose, and then have him whip it. Whoa. 
Maybe that's too much. We have him. Oof. Have him whip it into here. So it would be interesting. Let's start, start seeing his arm. Yeah, I think after seeing his arm, you get even a clearer, more stronger pose. So I think this will help this sell this motion even more. And I would, <clears throat> from this pose to this pose, I would have a pose that's favoring more in the middle. Because right now it kind of pops from this to this. I would have something that's favoring more in this pose, just to ease it up a bit. So now let's move on to the money swing. The timing, everything feels good. But there, I noticed some things with the spacing. Because of the camera move, you might not notice it as much, but after when you adjust the camera move notes that I gave you, you would definitely start noticing it a bit more. Because if you look at it, the spacing here is all good. It's great as it's accelerating the spacing, spacing between the two get bigger. Then it goes to here. It pops to here, but it slows down again. It goes fast again, then slows down again. And it just goes up. So the arc is not really the arc is not, it's going like that, right? So I think you can work more in posing it so it's it follows like a nice arc like this. But the main thing is the spacing here. You know, right now you have it going like that, like that, gradually faster, and it pops to here, then it goes here, here, and then here again. So that's not, you can see how janky this could be. And when you play it again, you'll start noticing how there's a hitch around here, here, here. So I would even that out so you make sure, like, so that you make sure that the spacing goes gradually faster like that so I would move this pose back a bit and then well you have to adjust all of these but I would start moving them tweaking moving the poses back like back a bit so that it follows a nice a nicer path so it's not as drastic. And these aren't too clustered together. Because remember, he's this point, at this point, he's supposed to be going so fast that it propels him up to this height. So it should be going faster and not slowing down and fast again and slowing down. So you you def you definitely notice it more once you do those camera moves. So I'll work on that. And also Another note for this swing. I took some time to um, find some reference for you. If you look at Olympic men's horizontal bar um, gymnastics, you can tell they use a lot of their legs and they crunch their whole body together to get them up to that apex height so let's look at it again but you can see that oh he's doing crazy stuff now backwards okay 
So from here, you can tell. Look, he lets the feet drag, then he swings it up to give him that momentum, right? So it drags, then he swings right here. So now his legs aren't dragging anymore. Now it's his body following his legs. Then it drags again, and whoom. Now he's like at the eight, like he goes way higher and propels him to that apex height. So when I look at this video reference, the first thing I notice is that as he's coming down, his head is looking down, right? Then it starts switching and he starts like his head starts rotating up and starts looking at the bar. And as he comes down, and when he needs that force to go up to that height, he crunches his whole body. Do you see? You see his head tucking in and his legs tucking in as well, kind of doing like an ab crunch. And then, bam, he's up. He's up and off to the races. Let me pause that. So I think you can incorporate that to your to your shot as well, and it will give it that much more believability in the body mechanics of the swing. So I would from maybe frame frame thirty three. I'll start tilting the head up, so he's looking at the bar, still looking at the bar. Here, even still looking at the bar. And as he comes down, which you have, he starts crunching, he starts rotating his head down, like you have here. And then when it gets to this pose, which you're gonna adjust um, to around like the spacing, his body would be like that. Like a V, because he's like crunching his his whole body, his abs, his neck, his legs together to give it that propulsion. So like that. So it's coming down really hard. Boom. And then now, yeah, his legs are leading the way. And then now, after when you adjust the spacing and everything, this would sell even more. But yeah, I think that can make your swing even more powerful. You can even make it even crazier and have him like totally still grabbing on the bar at this point. And instead of the bar being this way, have him so it's grab the, the pole is actually like con concaving because he's there's so much force that he's dragging up, that he's dragging with him. Yeah. I think that, yeah, that can definitely make your swing and make your shot here a lot better. So now as we get into this part of the landing, I would, these poses can be pushed more, I feel like. And as he comes down, with his arms all stretched out. I feel like his shoulders are too stiff right now. It feels like it's still in its default T pose. And I think you can rotate it up because whenever you, you know, lift your arm up, your shoulder comes with it. It kind of goes into your neck. Sorry, I'll go to this pose. I'll have him looking down as well onto the pole because he needs to know where he's landing, right? So, I would stick his shoulders up a bit more. Have him have that, this kind of pose. So he's more like a superhero coming down, like the typical Spider-Man after a jump. 
kind of two fists in the air, comes down. Because it's not as powerful when, you know, like both of his hands that you have right now are facing this way. And it's not really natural, it feels like. Yeah, it feels like the the arm, the, this hand is actually, is actually flipped, I think. So, yeah, I would have them turn them so it's like, turn them so it's facing each other, like fists, and they come down. Or you can have it like a bit open as well. So, come down. So I'll blend this to this pose. And then when he comes down, I feel like this is too big of a pop and then it kind of sticks. I would actually, again, adjust the spacing. So it's more here. So maybe somewhere here. So it goes like that. This is the hips, by the way, where the hips should be. Because right now it pops too much from here to here. Yeah, I know your time is supposed to be snappy, but it's too, yeah. It's too, uh, I think it's a bit too much here. And now we'll work on your final, your final pose. Because of the camera and how it's angled, this leg seems a lot, it's foreshortened. So you can't really, you can't, it feels like the leg is really short here. So he looks really unbalanced. And I would actually, I would try to mirror it. So this, this leg, this leg would be on this side. So it'd be more like that, like that. And then the arm would be holding onto here. So it would be more like this pose. Like that. And I feel like it already feels better having it here just by mirroring it. But let's ignore that for now and look at the body mechanics of the hips and everything as he's bouncing the pole. If I'm just looking at the pole, I think it's the bounciness is okay and the timing of it. But what I notice most is how I always look at the hips first because that controls the movement for everywhere else, right? This is all working working fine, but then it kind of hits a wall. It just stops moving. You see that? It just hits a wall here. Hits a wall here. Ugh, this thing, sorry. Technology. So it hits the wall here. And you don't want it to, like, you need to keep him settling with the pole. So have some movement in there. You know, have some movement on the hips, left and right, up and down, not just up and down. Because at one point you just, it just goes into here. It just starts going up and down, up and down without left and right. Remember, this pole is really, you know, bouncy. So he would be trying to regain his balance the whole time. And one thing I also that really sticks out to me as he's balancing is that his legs, his ankles aren't aren't moving at all with the bar. As he's, you know taking on his his weight his legs or his ankles should be you know going past the pole and is like gripping with his toes and then coming back to this position this is an exaggerated pose but you need to move his ankles here and same goes with the other foot and because he's, his other foot is sticking so far away, there would be like, I would add little polish things like 
you know, shifting his foot for each bounce. So it's not just sticking onto the pole. It would be like, you know, shifting back and forth a little bit, back and forth a little bit just to give it that more texture to your shot. And yeah, and this applies like, you know, this hitting the wall of the hips here applies to the whole body. So you can see the body, the chest, after a certain point, it just sticks. And the arms it just sticks. You need to keep it moving because it's a wobbly pole. So, yeah, you have to add that settle in, you know. But I think, like, here, you did a good job of, like, doing the hips and how that correlation between the hips and the pole is nice, like, when you first lands on it. It's just carrying that on, making sure that is going throughout the whole, the rest of the shot. Overall, I think you did a really great job of the shot, Every version that you've uploaded has been better than the last, and that's great. Uh, you should be really proud of yourself for you know, making those changes, the right changes as well, the right decisions to make your shot better each time. And that's really impressive. That's definitely a skill that's valuable. So if you ever need more feedback, let us know, and we'll be happy to do it. And I hope you found these notes useful. I hope this like helps you push your shot to even a more polished level that you find that you can call final. So yeah, um, can't wait to see your next shot. And yeah, happy animating, man. Keep it up.